over the course of the next half an hour, we'll be updating you on everything that's been happening over the world. And let's start with some international news first, where a ship carrying 5,500 tons of flour that was docked in Yemen's Red Sea port of Hadeda on Sunday after 20 days of military blockade from Saudi-led coalition and a security official at the port has said on Wednesday the Saudi-led coalition fighting the Yemeni dominant Shiite Houthi rebels said that it will allow access of humanitarian supply planes to the cities of Sana'a and other areas that had been denied humanitarian aid due to the blockade. The hunt for an Argentine submarine that's been missing since the 15th of November has reached its 11th day. It had seven days worth of oxygen when it reported its last position nearly 300 miles off the coast of Argentina. The Argentinian Navy is continuing its search, helped by the navies of other nations such as the United States, Britain and Chile. The international search efforts include about 30 ships and planes manned by 4,000 personnel from 13 countries including Brazil, Chile, Great Britain and the United States. Saudi Arabia's Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salman has vowed to hunt down terrorists until they are wiped out from the face of the earth. Now, Mohammed bin Salman was speaking at the inaugural session of the Islamist Military Counterterrorism Alliance in Riyadh. The summit is the first meeting of the defense ministers and other senior officials from the Islamic Military Counterterrorism Coalition. Reports from Pakistani media indicate that Law Minister Zahid Hamid has resigned in view of the violent protests across the country. Educational institutions in Islamabad, Rawalpindi and other cities have been closed today and at least six people have been reported to have been killed in violent protests in the last two days. Now, the Pakistan Army Chief General Hamad Jawad Bajwa has also called on the country's Prime Minister to handle the protests peacefully. More than 8,000 security personnel were deployed to clear the Fazabad interchange of protesters. The thousands of protesters have stormed the streets of Romanian capital Bucharest on Sunday protesting against the ruling Social Democrats' plan to overhaul the judiciary. The similar protests were also held in other major cities including Brasov, Sibiu and Konstantinov. The protesters say that such changes would allow high-level corruption to go unpunished Sunday's protest was the biggest since the massive anti-corruption protest. At the beginning of the year, the proposed judicial overhaul has also been widely criticized by the European Commission and foreign diplomats. Now, just weeks ahead of the regional elections in Catalonia, polls show that pro-independence parties might fail to retain an absolute majority in the parliament. Now, the polls show that pro-independence parties winning about 67 seats, one shot of the absolute majority that they would need to retain control of the regional parliament. That the Catalan separatist leaders have predicted to win about 46% of all votes which are cast, which is almost 1% down from the year 2015 in which they had won 47% of the votes. Russian airstrikes have killed at least 53 people, including 21 children, in a village held by the Islamic State group in Syria's eastern Deir el Zor province. Now, according to sources, the strikes have hit various residential buildings in the village of Al Shafa on the eastern bank of the Euphrates River. The rescue operation is still underway. In a first ever papal visit to the Buddhist majority Myanmar, Pope Francis will arrive in the country today amidst the alleged persecution of the Rohingya minorities. As Myanmar faces allegations of ethnic cleansing of minority Muslims, Pope Francis has been advised to avoid the use of the term Rohingya for the persecuted Muslim minority in the country. The Pope will also be visiting Bangladesh where about 6 lakh Rohingya Muslims have fled ever since violence erupted in Myanmar's Rakhine province. Pope had previously decried the violence against the Rohingya Muslims, calling them his persecuted brothers and sisters. 
The world governing body of athletics, IAAF, on Sunday has maintained its suspension on Russia, saying that it still had not done enough to clamp down on doping allegations. The decision comes ahead of the crucial International Olympics Committee meeting from the 5th of December till the 7th of December on whether Russia can compete in the 2018 Winter Olympics to be held in Pyeongchang. The Mount Agung volcano erupted today in the Karanganese near Bali in Indonesia and a video which was captured which has captured the eruption in the early hours showed thick black volcanic ash bellowing out from the crater. Now, the latest eruption has produced a bigger ash cloud than the initial eruption on Tuesday. As many as 25,000 people have been evacuated from the slopes of Mount Agung into refugee shelters. Authorities have also called for calm amongst the local community flights to Bali from several cities in Australia, the Netherlands and Malaysia and these floods have been cancelled and rerouted as a result of the eruption. The Honduran President Juan Orlando Hernandez voted on Sunday in a historic election that is expected to hand him a second term. A president serving a second term was illegal in Honduras till the year 2015 and Hernandez has faced accusations that drug and graft stained money has entered his campaign and criticism that he has stifled in the country over the last several years. Well, there are winds of change, not just in Honduras, but also in Cuba as well, that is witnessing elections in the country. Cuba's municipal elections kicked off on Sunday. The Cuban president, Raul Castro, also voted in Havana on Sunday. After Sunday's municipal elections, the Cubans will now vote for the members of the National Assembly who will then elect the country's president and vice president. The Rahul Castro has announced that he will step down as president in February 2018, ending 60 years of rule by the Castro brothers in Cuba. A bus overturned in southern Chile, leaving at least 11 people dead and 20 others injured. The bus was carrying about 45 passengers, including officials from the local family health center, who work with the local Mapuche people. A police investigation is on to find out as to how the bus overturned. Well, to some national news now. In Hadia, the 25-year-old Muslim convert whose appearance in the Supreme Court is being eagerly awaited by many in Kerala will today appear before the apex court. Nahadia broke her silence on the entire conversion route, saying that no one had compelled her to convert to Islam and that she awaits justice so that she can be reunited with her husband. For Adia, Hadia, it's a case of love, but her father alleges that she's been a victim of love jihad. Now, in a landmark move, the Madhya Pradesh cabinet on Sunday has approved handing out death sentence to rape convicts in cases that involve girls of 12 years and below. The cabinet has also passed a resolution for death sentence for gang rape convicts and approved the amendment in the penalty code to increase the fine and punishment for rape convicts. Now, this comes after multiple cases of sexual violence against girl child, against girl children and women surfaced in the state. The Niti Aayog Vice Chairman Rajiv Kumar has said that the time has come for consolidation of reforms including GST, Bankruptcy Court and Benami Law initiated by the Modi government in the last 42 months to ensure that the steps deliver the described foods. Now he's further added that the new initiatives in the next 18 months should focus on health and education sectors as these two are going to be critical for human resource development. Prime Minister Narendra Modi on Sunday has stressed upon the importance of separation of powers between the three arms of the government, that is the legislature, judiciary and executive. He further said that the legislature should have the independence of making laws and the executive should have the independence in taking decisions and the Supreme Court should have the independence of interpreting the constitution. Now the Prime Minister was addressing a valedictory event in New Delhi on the occasion of the National Law Day.
The government has launched a criticism against judicial activism by the constitutional court saying that judges must restrain themselves from donning the role of the super executive or super legislature. Uh, speaking at the Constitution Day function organized by the Supreme Court, Union Law Minister Ravi Shankar Prashad said that probity and propriety in the judiciary is as important as judicial independence. He further added that the fine balance amongst the judiciary, the executive and the legislature should be maintained to avoid any strain. The Union Minister for Minority Affairs, Mukhtar Abbas Nakhvi, has said that India has a wide network of different banks to meet the financial needs of people and hence the government has no intention to consider introducing the Islamic banking. Islamic or Sharia banking is a system of finance in which interest is not charged. The minister further said that the government will not allow Islamic banking because India is a secular and democratic country. So lashing out at Pakistan over the release of Hafiz Saeed, who has been designated a global terrorist, Union Finance Minister Arun Jaitley has warned the neighbouring nation that there is no place for a country in the world that backs terrorism. As speaking in Surat, Jaitley said that Pakistan releasing Saeed two days before the 26-11 Mumbai attack anniversary showed Islamabad's true intention. And Jaitley has also warned that the extremist organisation lashkar e by saying that whosoever becomes Lashkar commander will not live long.